Good evening, guys and girls. In this video, we are going to study reflection, which is the first of a couple of different lessons we need to have on what happens when a wave encounters a boundary. So when I say when a wave encounters a boundary, what that means is that a wave encounters the boundary between two different media, like, for example, going from air into water. So when that occurs, we might call such a wave an incident wave, there are three things that are possible. The first is called transmission. What that means is that the wave just enters the new medium and keeps on moving. So a picture might look something like this. So we'd say that that wave has been transmitted. And so that's kind of like when light goes through a piece of glass. It's just transmitted through. It goes right through. The second possibility is that the wave could be reflected. That means that the wave is going to move away from the new medium and stay in the original medium. So a reflected wave would look something like that. The incident wave moves towards the right, towards the water. The reflected wave moves to the left, away from the water. And then the third possibility is that the wave could be absorbed. What that means is that the energy used to create the wave is going to be lost to thermal energy. This causes the wave to be destroyed. It's no longer a wave, or at least smaller in amplitude. And it causes the medium to heat up. So, how do we determine what is going to happen? So, the first thing that we need to understand is that we could have more than one of these things happen for any particular um, situation. So, for example, if you walk by a car in a parking lot on a sunny day, sunlight is going to be incident on the window of the car. Part of that light could be transmitted, like the light actually enters the car. You can see it reflecting off of things inside the car. Part of that light could be reflected. For example, it's really um, quite common for you to look at a car uh, window and to see your reflection, to see your face, just like it was a mirror. And then part of it could be absorbed. After a while, sitting in the sun, you touch that window and it's going to feel warm. So it's possible for two or three of these things to happen in any given situation. In general, what controls what's going to happen is not so much anything to do with the wave, but it's the nature of the medium that it encounters. It's the medium that controls the behavior of a wave when it reaches it. And this is a general statement that's going to be real important for us to understand. So, let's look at a few examples. Suppose that we have blue light, and we shine it on an object with, which is black. You probably already know that black is black because it absorbs light, and so blue light will be absorbed by something that is black. Blue light will no longer be light, it'll just go to thermal energy, and it'll make it warmer. If we take the same blue light and we shine it on something that is blue, it's blue because it reflects blue light, and so the blue light would be reflected. And so you may be familiar with the idea that on a sunny day, if you're wearing black clothing, you will feel hotter. That's because black absorbs light, whereas light clothing, white clothing, and things like that um, will reflect light. And so you won't be as hot because the light's reflected and not absorbed. Another example using sound waves. Sound waves will reflect off of rocks and tile and things like that. Whereas if you make the same sound wave incident on something like foam, then it will be absorbed. A good example of this in action is if you look above your head in any classroom at Grapevine High School, and in most um, commercial or industrial buildings, you'll see tiles that are made out of foam. And those are there just to absorb sound um, and cut down on the reflection. By the way, you might refer to a reflected sound wave as an echo. And so if you're out in the mountains, you can hear echoes really easily because sound waves will reflect off of them. If you've ever had an audiology exam or you've um, practiced an instrument in a soundproof room, it sounds really weird because there's foam all around you to absorb all the sound waves. And so you're not hearing the echoes that you're, that you're normally hearing. Um, and so it's kind of important we understand an echo is just a reflected sound wave. Okay, so let's look at reflection in a little bit more detail. 
Um, when you have a wave that is reflected on a medium, and the wave is incident at an angle, which is the normal case, um, and when I say when it's, ref when it's incident at an angle, I'm talking about it's incident at an angle relative to a normal line drawn through the medium, well, the law says that we're going to see the reflected wave at the same angle. So that's kind of cumbersome. Let's draw a picture. Here's our incident wave going from air to glass. And here is a line that is normal to the glass. Remember, normal means perpendicular to a plane. And then here's the reflected wave. And so the incident angle, I'm going to call that theta i relative to normal. And the reflected angle, I'm going to call that theta r, are going to be the same size. So the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection. We call that simple rule the law of reflection. Now what you may be wondering is why didn't we measure the angle relative to the glass itself? Like for instance, redraw my picture here. Why don't we measure those two yellow angles? Aren't they equal to each other as well? And the answer to that question is yes, but we need to remember that not all media that we encounter are going to be flat. So it's very, very common for us to have a curved mirror, in which case we really can't measure the angle relative to the surface because the surface is curved. So if the surface isn't flat, then we can't think about it like that. And so that's why it's important that we always think about angles and measure angles when it comes to reflection and then later on refraction. Measure those from the normal. Always want to do that from the normal because that's the only thing that's always going to be there. So why does that rule have to be that way? How can we explain the law of refraction? Um, and kind of like what we did with diffraction, we could kind of explain it using a basic principle about waves. And this principle is called the principle of least action, or Fermat's principle, if you want to be really Hollywood. Um, and what this principle basically says is that a wave will travel from point A to point B along a path that's going to make it get there the quickest. It's going to take the least amount of time. So if we kind of draw another sketch of our air-glass interface, there's point A, which is like the source of the wave, and here's point B, where we're going to actually observe it. So we want to go from A to B um, by reflecting off of the mirror, in this case the glass. And so the question is, what path gets us from A to the glass to point B the quickest? Since we're only moving through air, where the velocity is always constant, um, all we really need to do here is figure out what's the shortest path. So I'm going to kind of sketch out two paths real quick. There's one possible path. And then there's the second possible path. And if you kind of look at those and maybe slide the lines around a little bit mentally in your mind, um, hopefully you can see that the purple path is shorter than the orange path. It takes less amount of time to go along that short path than for the long path. And then hopefully you can also see we did the whole normal line thing. Let me draw a better normal line. Hopefully you can see that the incident angle and the reflected angle are about the same, as well as I could draw my picture. Whereas for the um, orange dash line, that would not be the case. And so that's why we see the angle of incident and the angle of reflection being the same, is it lets, us, the, lets the wave travel from point A to point B in the least amount of time. Last thing to kind of discuss, and that's the idea of diffuse reflection. So this occurs when you have a surface with, of your new medium, which is not smooth and flat, but is rough instead. The law of reflection still works, but we have to understand that the surface is no longer flat. So here's a flat surface. I'm going to draw three incident rays. Each of those rays would reflect at the same angle, and so the picture will look something like that. And so if you were to be standing over in this area, and you would actually see those rays of light into your eye, you would see something that looks like a nice image. Whatever created the blue rays to begin with, 
would still be preserved. You would still see it. Whereas if your surface looked more like this, a good example of that would be like a piece of paper. Paper is rough. You got the same incident rays, and they're all going to reflect at the same angle relative to the normal, but normal is going to be different depending on where they hit on the surface. And so instead of them all ending up going the same direction, like up and to the right, they're going to go in all different directions. And so we say that the waves have been diffused. So that piece of paper will reflect all the light that falls on it. It's just not going to reflect it coherently like a mirror would. And the difference, again, is the nature of the medium. It has nothing to do with the waves themselves. It has to do with the thing that they're striking. And so we can have paper that is white, meaning it reflects all the light that falls on it, but it still doesn't make a nice mirror image just because it is rough. Speaking of mirror images, I'll leave you with this image. See if you can decide if this image is upside down or if it is right side up. I'll leave you with that. Till next time, ta-ta.